Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manuals for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we are about to solve are the ones that you will find on page number 62. Please turn to it. Page number 62 and today is our lesson number 11. Today's lesson actually is the continuation of yesterday's lesson. If you have not watched day 10, stop this video. Do not continue it. You must understand the concept of rational numbers and irrational numbers before you will get anything out of what we are about to do right now because I am not about to explain everything again. We are simply going to do the problem. Yesterday we talked about in great detail what it means for a number to be rational and what it means for a number to be irrational. As I said, if you have not watched yesterday's video, do not continue watching it. Watch the yesterday's video. You must watch all of these videos in proper sequence if you want to prepare properly. You cannot just go all over the places. Okay, so exercises is what we are going to do. Practice problem on page 62. It says, classify, classify each of these numbers, each number as rational, irrational, and real numbers. The very first one they gave us is root of 36. Let's first talk about what is a real number. A real number, a real number is any number any number that can be that that can be represented on a number line that can be represented on a number line so here is our number line here is our zero here we have the positive numbers here we have negative numbers. If you can represent the number, if, if you can give a, represent a given number on a number line, it's a real number. Now keep listening. Listen very carefully. Every number that you will see in this exam is going to be a real number. There exists an entire universe, a mirror image of the real, real numbers, what the mathematicians call imaginary numbers. And they are just that. They are imaginary numbers. We do not, you and I, do not deal with those numbers. We do not come across with those numbers. We don't have to do anything with them. Only ma pure mathematicians, when they are dealing in theories, deal with those numbers, engineers, mathematicians. You will never see an imaginary number on the T's. You never see any imaginary numbers on the SAT or GRE or GMAT, any of these exams. You understand? They do not, uh, they don't, uh, the real, uh, imaginary numbers are not for the mere mortals. So don't worry about those. Every answer choice here, A through whatever it is here, however many they give you, A through G, they are all real. A through G, they are all real. A through G, they are all real. As we'll see in a second. Root of 6, or root of 36 is 6. Root of 36 is 6. Well, we can represent 6. If this is your, the 6 would be here, for that matter. It, it, in other words, 6 exists on our number line. It's a real number. Is it a rational number or irrational number? A rational number, as we just learned yesterday, is a number that can be represented as a fraction, a number that does not have, uh, that does, uh, if, it's, if it's in decimal, it does not go on forever, or if it does go on forever, it has a pattern. For example, yesterday we learned that 1 over 3, 1 over 3, even though it goes on forever, even though it goes on forever, there is a clear pattern. It's just 0 0.33333 three goes on and on and on and on, which can be written as 0.3. And therefore, it's a rational number. And the way we can very easily could tell right away is that, uh, that this is a rational number because a rational number is something that can be written as a fraction. 6 can be written as a fraction as 6 over 1 or 12 over 2. It's a rational number. This is a rational number. Let's go to the next one. Number B. Next one is negative of the root 36. 
called root of root of 36 is 6. So instead of instead of a instead of a positive 6 here, we have a negative 6. So that's what it does here. So instead of being on that side, we are going to be on this side. But it is a rational number. This is also a rational number, and as I said already, they are all real numbers. Let's look at C. Ah, root of 37. Root of 37, if you were to pick up your calculator, which you are not allowed to do in the real exam, but right now, if to satisfy your curiosity, if you were to pick up the calculator and, and punch in and figure out the root of 37, you will see that it goes on forever and ever. I don't know what it is, but it will go on and ever and ever, and it has no it has no repeating pattern. I'm just going to do it out actually, because I'm curious myself. Because obviously it's going to be 6 point something. Oh, great. Just when you need it root of 36. I should have calculators. Just give me one brief second. I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere. Root of 37 is what we're looking for. I can't find any calculator. It will go on forever. It will go on forever and it has no repeating patterns. This is going to go on. It's going to be uh, it's going to be six point something 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 something. It will go on forever with no pattern with no pattern therefore it is root of 6 uh, root of 37 is irrational let's go on then in part D they give us one third we just talked about one third as a matter of fact we just talked about one third let's do it here part D D even though it, it is it is a non-terminating decimal, that's how we speak. It is instead of saying it goes on forever, that's not how we say it. We don't say it goes on forever, even though it is a non-terminating decimal, just like this one, it's gonna be six point something forever and ever. It's a non-terminating decimal here, just like here, except over here, there was no pattern. Because there is no pattern, it is irrational. Here there is a logic, there is a rhythm to it, which is that it will go on forever, but it is 0.333333 forever and ever, which can be written as 0.3 with a bar on top of it, because there is a pattern here. Pattern could be one digit pattern, it could be a, a pair of pa pattern, it could be 0 0.272727274 27 and ever, ever, it could be three digit uh, pattern, it, it could be any pattern. You can have a string of five digit pattern. It can go on forever, for example, 0 0.1235, 1235, 1235, 1235, yes, whatever, 1235, that's a four. I'm not a math person, you understand? So that is a rational number because there is a pattern. One third is rational. Oh, how have we been writing it? Next to them. It is rational. Let's, on, let's go on to E. If there is E, oh, there is E and there is F. Point 0.6. Point 0.6 clearly is a rational number and it's a real number. They are all real numbers, as we said already. A through D, they are all real numbers. Because all of these can be represented on number line. Negative 6 is right here. Uh, this is 6 point something is going to be right here. So this was our A, this is our B, this is going to be our C. 6 point something. That's, uh, that's the point 0.3 something. Uh, it's going to be somewhere here. They're all, they all, oh it's a positive point rather. It's a positive point 0.3. That's going to be our D. They can all be represented on the number line. Point 0.6 is going to be somewhere here. As you can get the idea, point they are all real numbers. Point 6. Is it, a, is it uh, of course, a real number? Is it a rational number? The answer, of course, is yes. For one very simple factor, it does not have a non terminating decimal. As I said, it's just point 6. And if it did have a non terminating decimal, then, we'll, then we would have looked for a pattern. But there is no need to go as far as that. There is no, no need for us to look for a pattern because it doesn't go on forever. It's just point 6. On the, way, on, the, on the way we can uh, quickly assert that it is actually a rational number is because the rational number is something that can be written as a fraction and 0 0.6 can clearly be written as a fraction. 0 0.6 can be written as 6 over 10 or 3 over 5 if you like. If you can express a number as a fraction, it is a rational number. So E is rational. E is rational. I'm going to raise this number line business, okay? It's annoying, it's nuisance. They are all real numbers. Let's go on to the next one, which is F. F gives us 
0.66 repeating. Well, 0.66 repeating. Again, it's a rational number. Why is it a rational number? Even though it's repeating, it goes on forever and ever. 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, go ever and ever. It's a non-terminating decimal here. In F, we have an, what is known as non-terminating decimal. Then why is it rational? Well, it's rational because even though it is non-terminating, it has a clear pattern, which is, it's 0 0.66666 forever and ever. There is a pattern. So therefore, it is a rational number. If it, if it, if it has a pattern, it can always be represented as a fraction, one number over the other number. You might not know what those numbers are, but there exists a number that you can put on the top, there exists a number that you can put on the bottom, if there is a pattern. Do you understand? For example, this, was, this one is clear cut, 0 0.66, we already know, is equals to 0 0.66 repeating. And by the way, when it's, 0 .6, when it's just 0 0.6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, that line, that bar, does not need to be on two of them. I don't know why they do that. Most books, you will find it like this. Because it's just one digit that is repeating. It's just 0.6 with the bar on it. And that, of course, we know is equal to 2 thirds. And it's a, it's, a, it's a rational number. It's a rational number because it can be represented as a fraction. It's a rational number because there is a pattern. E, that was F. Finally, G. Where can we squeeze G? Let's put G way up on the top. In G, we have 0 0.7, 0, 07, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, now this would have been rational. This number would have been rational. But that's not what we have here. There is no, there is no rhythm or rhyme to it. That number that they give us, that number that they, given, they have given us here is irrational. That's all. I will see you tomorrow where we'll do the remaining two problems because they're a little tricky. The, the, the problem number two and problem number uh, three uh, they are not quite as straightforward. We'll do those separately. Okay? Bye now.